Hey guys, come back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a tier list 2.3 video. So I have been playing quite a bit of ranked for the past couple of days to just sort of see what are the power levels of the various uh, champions in the various roles. So first up, uh, something I gotta get out of the way is that normally what we do for our tier list is that we normally talk about the changes compared to the previous tier list. But as you guys can see, I've actually added an S plus tier for all five roles. This is just so I have a little bit more freedom to maneuver the top of the tier list because sometimes some characters, you know, they are they are good, but instead of being in the S tier, they're in the A tier, which doesn't really seem so good. So instead, I'm just adding an S plus tier. So we still have S plus. Uh, characters which are those really good ones that we have the S tier and so on so today I'm, I'm just going to be covering um, mostly what has changed so I'm going to actually gloss over a, uh, a couple of ca uh, champions so that the video is not too long but first up very obviously at the very very top of the Baron Lane tier list we have Garen so now, it is no secret I think that Garen uh, t full tank Garen has been a trend especially for the past like two three weeks uh, onwards people have figured out that uh, full tank Garen is really really strong and really hard to play against just because of uh, the fact that Garen is a statistic champion so all he does he, he silences you he spins on your hit and there is really no counterplay to that they tried to nerf Garen in the latest patch but honestly it has barely affected him the ultimate I, I did uh, play Garen in, in, in this patch and I did feel the ultimate cooldown was noticeable but Garen is still really strong so he is definitely at the top of the tier list and I have actually recently made a Garen video just right before 2.3 um, 2 release so if you guys haven't checked that out yet you can get you can check it out over there so uh, of course Fiora still uh, really uh, one of the best Baron Leaners if you're good at Fiora and Gragas actually moving way up as well full tank Gragas has also become a trend actually uh, starting the trend before full tank Garen so as you guys can see Baron Lean is getting to be a very really tanky role which is actually going to affect the meta quite a bit because we're moving away from the assassin meta into sort of a tankier kind of meta so who else is a tank? In S tier, we still have Malphite, of course, great uh, teamfight ultimate, the usual. Camille is still really good, uh, both at uh, split pushing and making picks as well. Renekton, after his uh, buff on his Q, I didn't think that it would do too much, honestly, but uh, I've actually seen from playing against him that actually the Renekton buff has actually made him pretty strong, so he is, he is actually in the S tier at the moment. Uh, as for Riven and Irelia, of course, as usual for the newest champions, all this uh, tier list positioning is speculative. But from what I've seen, Riven and Irela's base numbers are pretty high. So I do believe that Riven probably is going to be a little bit better than Irela because of the smaller uh, number of champions in uh, Wild Rift. There aren't actually a lot of good matchups for Riven and Irela. So I have actually just put them in the S and A tier for now, just based on the fact that their numbers are really high. But if it turns out that their matchups are horrible, they might drop down. Or if it turns out that people master like Riven's animation cancelling and, and uh, how to generally play Irelia with her uh, Q resets, maybe they'll move up as well. But this is tentatively where I'm putting them in the S and the A tier respectively. I think Riven is just has an edge over Irelia in the Baroning, especially because Irelia really hard to... Uh, play her against tanks and you know to just kill them unless you know they they are way overextended and they don't know what they're doing so after that we have Darius which technically has dropped since he was in the second highest tier uh, the reason being uh, his latest nerf did hit him quite hard his maximum bleed damage did uh, reduce quite a bit and also uh, as Darius is being has been dominant in the top lane for longer and longer, the higher and higher elo you go, the more and more people know how to play against Darius, and and the higher in higher elos, uh, Darius really isn't very good like like Emerald and upwards, but in lower elos he's still all right. So as a general tier list, I just put him in the A tier because he is good in low elo, but not really in high elo. Now Rengar top is actually pretty good of course not as good uh, to be in the s plus or s tier but he is still really good uh, if you know how to play rengar properly and you get a kill you can start snowballing and kill uh, your enemy laner again and again and then you move around the map uh, kill the enemy jungler or the mid laner influence the rest of the map and get your bone tooth necklace stacks at all and uh, uh, as well i mean and then you can s uh, start snowballing the game uh, so now with the latest cannon buff in 2.3, I realized a lot of people uh, have uh, started to pick up cannon and cannon uh, is honestly his ultimate still doesn't do uh, as much damage as, as it did. But I have actually got destroyed by cannon ultimates for like three 
uh, matches in a row. There's always a cannon, and the cannon always gets fed in the early game. I suspect that people haven't played against cannon for too long a time, and they forgot how uh, uh, good cannon was as a ranged top laner, so they end up feeding the cannon, which translates to cannon's ultimate actually doing damage because he has items and he's fed. So, uh, not too sure if it, uh, uh, cannon being A tier is just because people forgot how to play against him, or if the buffs actually really helped his damage in a huge way. Wukong still, uh, still good with his... Um, AoE teamfight ultimate. Pantheon, despite the buffs, uh, honestly, he still has the same problem, which is that he falls off late game. So by the time he gets his second and third rank on his ultimate for the uh, armor penetration, it doesn't really matter all too much. And the biggest change that we've got to cover here is Akali. So Akali has dropped all the way from uh, what was the S tier, the highest rank to now what is the B tier. She's still alright, but she honestly really isn't that good anymore. Reason being is that um, the nurse to her, to her energy and to her early game uh, hit her really hard. She used to be very oppressive in the Baron lane because all she did was... Uh, she, most Baron laners are melee. They, she stepped up to them, hit them with her 5 point strike, proc her passive, uh, auto attack for the increased uh, uh, range damage and the energy refund, and then she just rinse repeat the process uh, for like about 3 times before she, before she like runs out of energy. She shrouds and she can do it all over again. But now without the energy refund on her passive, um, she really has a very very weak early game. And um, she is not going to be able to... Uh, harass people as well in lane but her strength now lies in just solely the assassination so i've always said akali is better in the baron lane than the mid lane but after this patch akali is actually now better in the mid lane than the baron lane just because uh, her, the strength of akali in baron lane was her harass and you know it's uh not good anymore and the baron uh, at the bottom of the baron lane tier list nothing has actually changed something i just want to point out is that vayne might actually become um, better now that uh, there there are a lot of tanks like Vayne into Garen could be a really good matchup just because uh, you know she has a range advantage on Garen and she can really just uh, use her range to abuse uh, Garen. Uh, somewhat somewhat she can do that to Gragas as well, but Gragas at least has his body slam. Fiora is way too mobile, so Vayne could be a very good counter pick against Garen. But you know it's been you know seven, seven minutes on the Baroning tier list already. Let's quickly move on to the jungle. Okay. So for the jungle, uh, as usual, Lee Sin is top tier. Uh, Lee Sin will always be probably one of, if not the best jungler, just because of how much early game pressure he has over pretty much anybody uh, else in the jungle. And, you know, he can snowball his lanes, he can snowball his lead from the early game. Uh, nothing too much to comment there. But Camille actually shot all the way up from, I believe, what was C tier. Uh, all the way up to the S plus tier. Now, Camille Jungle has really, really been coming up and it has really been good. Now, I've said that her problem is her early game clear in the previous tier list and the problem is still the same. Her levels 1 through 5, it really isn't very strong. So, picking Camille into like a Lee Sin may not be very good, but picking Camille into what is like in the S, the S tier champions or uh, the A tier champions is pretty good because Evelyn, Rengar, Kha'Zix, uh, Wukong, Vi, Jarvan uh, are all pretty ultimate reliant champions. Rengar and Kha'Zix a little bit less, but um, the rest are really ultimate reliant, so they're generally going to be farming up to level 5 unless there is a gank opportunity. So Picking Camille into basically anyone other than Lee Sin is going to be good because you're generally going to be relatively untouched and you can farm up to level 5 and at level 5 your ganks are amazing because of your Hextech ultimatum you can just trap the uh, oppo opponent and as long as they're not too near their tower you pretty much is a guaranteed kill every time. Um, sometimes you don't even need to necessarily land your hookshot just the fact that you have your ultimate up you just get a successful gank just like that and of course Camille jungle has the same strength as Camille top lane so at the late game you can also be a split pusher exactly the same as Camille uh, baron lane so Camille is just really good uh, Evelyn um, despite the nerfs is still S tier not quite top top tier anymore but she's still really good she also was hurt by the mastermind nerf because there's no true damage on mastermind anymore it's adaptive damage so it's a little bit uh, harder for Evelyn to steal but pretty much still the same it's just a li just that little bit harder but still pretty much the same Kha'Zix and Rengar are both really uh, strong in the jungle and Rengar even got a hotfix nerf and you know when he gets a hotfix nerf that he must be really breaking the meta because uh, before the nerf he's probably S plus after the nerf he's, he's now S still really good just not as broken uh, 
Rengar, uh, people slowly are actually starting to know how to play against him, but other than that, he can really get kill snowball the game, and uh, he can just jump out and one-shot anybody who's like not a tank, so he's really good. Kha'Zix with the latest buff um, to his Isolation Rage actually has helped him a lot, which is much like what I predicted in the uh, tier list, uh, sorry, not the tier list, in the patch review, which you can check out uh, up top in the cards right now. What you can also check out is the Kha'Zix video that I made recently, but Kha'Zix now is pretty much the same as Rengar. You can snowball the game very, uh, very easily as a Kha'Zix and a Rengar. So, uh, jungle assassin meta is sort of still there with the uh, Evelyn, Kha'Zix, and Rengar. Uh, Ukong still really strong in the jungle with his uh, level 5 ultimate gangs uh, with the knockup. Now, Vi and Jarvan uh, always have been pretty good jungle picks, just never like S tier, never top tier. But actually, this time, uh, Vi, for the first time, I've put Vi in front of Jarvan. And the reason for that is Vi's um, passive, which shreds armor, is actually really useful when ganking Baron Lane. So, Jarvan has a lot harder time than Vi ganking Baron Lane, but Vi with her armor shred actually can uh, shred through tanks, like for example, Garen. Um, not that he's that squishy, but is he's gonna she's gonna have an easier time than Jarvan. The point here is that Vi is now better than Jarvan in this current patch. Pantheon jungle is probably better. Uh, probably, it might even be Pantheon's best position. I'm not sure, but Pantheon jungle is honestly pretty, pretty all right because his ganks he has a point and click stun, and his damage early game is pretty high. So if you manage to get uh, good ganks off early game and snowball your lanes, that is your main win condition because you fall off late game, so getting yourself uh, fed in the early game of course will also help to uh, lead to more successful ganks, but Pantheon jungle's win conditions to snowball his lanes. Shivana has fallen from grace much like Olaf. Shivana is honestly not very good anymore. The tempo of the jungle is getting pretty high. Uh, Lee Sin, uh, you know, just... Uh, uh, gangs early game. Camille uh, rushes uh, level 5. Probably Shivana actually gets level 5 faster than Camille, but Camille rushes uh, level 5 and gets off gangs. Uh, same for same for Evelyn. Kha'Zix and Rengar, a lot of early gank pressure. Shivana without her ultimate is pretty useless. So Shivana's uh, heart farming style plus the lack of her ultimate making her literally completely useless. Uh, you know, it's just no good, no good anymore. So the rest, uh, let's see what else has changed. Uh, Ramus actually still stays in the C tier. Now, since the last tier list, I've actually countered, encountered a lot of uh, Ramuses in the enemy team and in my team. Ramus really is only good against like a full AD um, comp or, you know, for people who are very overextended and don't respect Ramus. If not, Ramus maybe is uh, good in like low elo, but, you know, in like uh, platinum and above, probably not good anymore because uh, he doesn't really do all that much. Uh, Xin Zhao moves up one tier just because of his, uh, his uh, buff. Or I wouldn't say buff his adjustment, which uh, sort of is like a buff because it's easier to engage. Uh, just because of his uh, slightly easier engage, he moves up one tier, but honestly not too much has changed. At the bottom of the jungle tier list, nothing has changed. So we're instead going to move on to the mid lane. Alright, on to the mid lane. So, uh, Diana still the... Diana and Katarina still the two best mid laners. Um, Katarina untouched this patch. Diana did get her alt damage um, nerfed, which has affected her. I have noticed the difference, but despite the nerf, she is still probably the best um, mid laner. The nerf did uh, did affect her, but not too much. She's still really, really strong. Her alt still does insane amounts of damage despite the nerf. Uh, Corky still uh, still S tier. Uh, uh, same for Oriana and Ziggs. Ziggs, despite the nerf, uh, not gonna affect him too much. He is still S tier. Galio, not no longer in the same tier as Corky, Oriana, and Ziggs. He is more like a counter pick against Diana and um, Katarina, which is why he's still in the A tier. If not for Diana and Katarina, he probably wouldn't be this good. After all his repeated uh, buffs, nerfs, and adjustments, he is sort of like A tier, B tier standard. Probably he'll be B tier without Katarina and Diana there, uh, since he is a strong counter pick against them. Irena, I've put her in A tier tentatively, same uh, as the uh, Baron Lane. We don't really know uh, how good she really is because I feel like her numbers are high. I feel like her damage is high, but no one, uh, of course, it's still the first we did the patch. No one has mastered Irela yet because Irela is really hard to master. So we're going to have to see how good people are at Irela, like maybe um, on the next uh, patch or two patches later when people have more time to learn her. Akali uh, has. Uh, Actually, technically remained at the same tier in mid lane, but she is better in mid lane and baron lane. But as I said, her uh, 
her early game is is not really good, and especially um, against ranged mid laners like the entire S tier, she may not really be very good. But what she is good at is assassinating. So the uh, mid lane people, uh, mid lane champions are a lot squishier than um, baron lane champions. So she can at least try to assassinate them. So she is uh, in a better spot in mid lane. Now uh, B tier, um, nothing, uh, nothing has changed. Seraphine Lux is still good. Twisted Fate is still good. Ari and Gragas are still good as well. Now C tier, actually I've moved Zed and Yasuo up ahead of Aurelion Soul and Pantheon. Pantheon moves up from the D tier actually. So. Uh, I have actually seen good Zeds and good Yasuos as of late, which leads me to put them a little bit higher. Still in the same tier, but now better than Aurelian Soul. So uh, if they are good, they can still uh, put in some work, but um, honestly, not they are not uh, the best. So Pantheon with his buffs uh, moves up a tier, but uh, mid lane, honestly, he, he can't really 100 to 0 anybody, and he has a very Camille playstyle, because when you jump in with your W, you can't... You have no way to jump out, so you basically have to jump in, uh, input all your damage. Uh, like maybe you have an empowered W, you go in, uh, empowered W, auto attack, auto attack, empowered Q. Then uh, that's your uh, entire trade. You you E and then you run out, all the way until you think they're low enough, and then you pretty much do the entire same all in, just probably with your ignite. So uh, of course um, they are a lot squishier in the uh, in the mid lane than the baron lane, but I just feel like Pantheon isn't really that strong. Same with uh, Aurelian Soul, ever since his nurse, he has never really been very strong. And he actually moves up from the E tier because Annie actually, I feel, does have potential. Uh, with her, now uh, what Annie's do is they rush Proto Belt. So what they do is they Proto Belt Tibbers. And actually, especially in low elo, it's really strong. She actually, her, uh, her burst damage is pretty insane. Just that she can 100 to 0 people. Normally, what happens when I feel, even if you get a like 5 man Annie out. Uh, into your W and your Q. What normally happens is you maybe take 75 to 80 percent of their health, and your team still has to follow up. So uh, that's why uh, any sort of needs her team to help her out. Fizz has um, never uh, really been good. Now, I actually forgot to mention about Fizz Jungle, guys. I forgot to mention about Fizz Jungle. Fizz Jungle is not in the tier list, but the reason for that is that I have no idea where Fizz Jungle how how good he is. I never played with him or against him Fizz Jungle, but I have went to the practice tool and I have actually tried out Fizz Jungle's clear. And you have to start on blue buff, if not you run out of mana halfway through your clear. Fizz Jungler relies on level 5 for his gank, so he is a level 5 kind of jungler, so he has to just farm up to level 5. So I tried to full clear as Fizz. Your clear isn't very fast, isn't very healthy in my opinion. Um, so I feel like against someone like a, a Lee Sin, or even if like people are bold enough, like even like a Camille, or even a Kha'Zix and Rengar, if they're bold enough, they can't actually invade you, and I think they probably get the kill on you, so I don't really feel like Fizz Jungle is really very good. But when he hits his level 5, it can be very uh, scary when he ganks, so if he is untouched to level 5, he can be good. But if I were to guess, I would say he's probably B tier, uh, just putting that in there. Uh, now Kennen and Wukong, um, they are alright. Uh, I wouldn't even say they're alright, they're not good in the mid lane, they're just way better in the baron lane, they're not good in mid lane at all. Same uh, story with Malphite. He is way better in the baron lane, and if you go mid lane, you're probably building full AP Malphite, and probably with full AP Malphite about the same as Annie. When you all in with your ultimate uh, and everything else, when you all in basically, uh, you're not gonna 100 to 0 them, even when you're fed. I, ha I have actually tried out AP Malphite, and on games that I am fed, um, I still can't 100 to 0 anybody, so uh, I feel like that's the problem with Malphite. Malphite needs his team to follow up. When you're playing Malphite tank, you still scale well because Malphite scales of armor, so it's sort of like the same, just that it's even better because uh, you don't, you can't one shot anybody as AP Malphite anyway, so, and you're gonna need follow up anyway, so you might as well just build, go Baron Lane, build tank, and then have your team follow up anyway, and be tanky for your team as well. So now, after the mid lane, we're gonna move on to the ADCs. Okay, so now for the ADC, there, there have actually been quite a little bit of changes. Not not a lot because ADC pool is pretty small, but what I think is S plus tier is actually Kaisa and Ezreal. Not Zaya anymore. I used to think Zaya was better than the both of them, but not anymore. Um, just because in in higher elos, it's quite hard to actually uh, get solo kills with Zaya. Now, Zaya last time... I, I used to be getting quite a bit of solo kills, but when I go to higher elo, uh, people know how to play against Zaya. Not 
many people are gonna be uh gonna stand in between you and your feathers for you to root them. So it's a lot harder to play Zaya, but Zaya is still really strong. Don't get me wrong, but just that Zaya's strength comes in. Uh, mainly is her ultimate, which is uh, just gives her untargetability for that like, about one plus second. That is her main strength. Now, her we have the crit build is still the best build. Uh, she does do quite a bit of damage with auto attacks, and you know she is really good uh, front to back team fighter. Uh, but Zaya, uh, not Zaya, Kaisa is a lot more versatile. She can dive backline. You know she does just way too much. She can play front and back. She can dive backline, and she has invisibility. Uh, you know she's just really. Uh, really good and she spikes very early with her Q evolve and her E evolve and Zaya, uh, Kaisa is probably just, uh, is, it is, is not probably, it is just the best AD carry now. Uh, Ezreal is really good after they reverted his buff, still really good, nothing too much to comment there. Corky and Jinx still good uh, scaling AD carries, um, just that Jinx is of course immobile and you need sort of someone to peel for you or you know someone to protect you and not you're just going to get focused down every fight. Varus actually moves up into the A tier. Now, it's not AP Varus. I tried AP Varus. He wasn't really that good, honestly. But what is good now is Lethality Varus. So what you go for is Mana Mune into, uh, into the Yomu's Ghost Blade, into Mortal Reminder, into Dust Blade, and then GA. So I've yet to make a video on a uh, Lethality Varus so just because I have like, basically, basically played him uh, 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 like a couple of times only. Um, but... Uh, I have actually also played him in ARAM, and I know for a fact that when you reach late game build, your arrow fully charged is going to be doing like half health of like a squishy mage. Like for example, a Lux, you're going to half health the Lux from just a full charge of your arrow without any blight stacks, without pressing your W. So Varus, I feel, is good when the teams are posturing each uh, around each other for team fights, and you can just throw out your, your Qs and you just poke them. And you know, basically, you've won the team fight before it's even started. But on team fights where the op 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 enemy engages straight away, it might be a little bit harder for Varus. But I feel like Varus is pretty good at the moment. Draven and Jin still stay where they are. But now, Vayne is actually no longer the worst AD carry. Actually, uh, Misfortune has dropped down like from I think what was A tier or the top of B tier. I think Misf Misfortune now used to be the best AD carry at one point in time, but. Now it's honestly terrible. I even think Tristana is better than, than Misfortune, but Vayne, I think, is better than Tristana, Misfortune, and Ash. Now, reason for that is honestly, when I really think about it, I'd rather pick Vayne than any of the three below her. I feel like Tristana is just not very good on Wild Rift, just because she's hard to operate on Wild Rift. It's hard to focus the person with the bomb, and you know you have to jump in and commit to the play most of the time. So, and her jump animation is really slow, so it's really hard to get back out. Misfortune is just weak overall. Ash has lack of damage. So overall, I think Vayne is actually better than the three of them. And actually, I have seen recently in ranked a lot of uh, Vayne's popping off. And I've actually also tried playing Vayne in ranked. And I also have made a Vayne video recently. So uh, you guys can check out that one. The Vayne hard carry video uh, if you guys want to check uh, see more on Vayne. So Vayne actually really can be very good. But has to be picked into the right matchups. So you can't pick Vayne into like an engage support. You have to pick Vayne into an enchanter support and you can't pick Vayne into something like a Seraphine which is gonna poke you to death. You can only pick it into like, you know, Sonas, Sorakas and like, you know, uh, you know, maybe Luxes. But you know, you can't pick Vayne into like uh, in, into engage supports like Alistar and Leona that kind. So Vayne has conditions before you can pick her. Unless you are really that good on Vayne, you can pick her into anything. Uh, but for me personally, I only pick Vayne into matchups that I am confident in. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the support tier list. Alright, so finally to the support tier list, as, as you guys can see at the very top, I've been saying this all along, Janna is the best support. She can do everything, she can peel with her tornado, she can peel and heal with her ultimate, she can poke with her, uh, with her W, she can heal and shield with uh, her E. So she really does everything and she can take up like any spell she can take ignite for kill pressure exhaust if there are a lot of assassins and so on and so forth but i've already made a janna complete guide so if you guys want to check that out that will be a uh, really good for a more in-depth janna explanation on why she's very good and how to play her but janna is the best support at the moment she's s plus just a cut above the rest in s we actually have brahm and alistair some people have said alistair is not that good anymore i I semi agree with that. I think Alistair's engage is now really predictable after months of people play against Alistar. But 
I feel like Alistar, if he gets a good engage, that's all he, it needs to just win his, his team the fight. And he's still really, really tanky. He's the most tanky support out of everybody. In fact, he, in my opinion, he's the only real, uh, really, truly, truly tanky support. Brom, honestly, I feel he is tanky, but he's nowhere near as tanky as Alistar. We have already covered Leona is not tanky. Galio is alright, but I feel Alistar is the most tanky. So if we really need a tank tank, you, you know, Alistar is still a good pick. Now, Nami and Lux have actually moved up a lot because Nami, as you guys know, my dual partner always plays Nami. Nami, I really see, is really strong. She can actually play the Janna playstyle where she pokes with her W. She can heal with her W as well. Uh, e for the buff. And if you can hit your bubbles, you know, she can create a lot of picks. Uh, if, if you guys see in some of my previous videos where my, my uh, partner Nami, she hits the bubbles and it creates kills off that. So, Lux... Uh, despite the shield nerf uh, two patches ago, she is still a really good support with her uh, with her pick potential, with her binding, uh, with her pick potential, with her R, and her zoning potential, in fact, with her global zoning potential with her R, and also with her shields. Her shields, of course, being the best part of Lux support. Uh, Seraphine is still amazing with her with her charm. Gallo is really good for his CC, and uh, also for his... For his... Uh, um, tankiness. Leona, good for her, her, her engage mainly, not so much her tankiness. Um, Rakan's buff did help him, but he is not going to move up any tiers, but he is at the is very top of B tier. Um, the rest of the support tier list basically remains the same. Pantheon's changes hasn't really affected him as support. Nothing really too much has changed in, in that role. Um, Blitzcrank changes, uh, honestly, I don't really think it means uh, too much, even though his uh, mana Barret has actually gotten a lot better. Um, I don't really think that it means too much. Uh, for uh, for Blitzcrank at all, and um, for the rest of the tier list, it has basically remained the same. So with that, guys, we've reached the end of the patch 2.3 tier list. So thanks for watching the video, guys, and goodbye.